So hi everyone, welcome to CMO Chats. My name is Atul Sharma. I currently head APAC marketing for Cockroach TV. I am a thoroughbred B2B marketing professional and being a tech marketer is what keeps me going uh, in my professional journey. I like to believe that uh, marketing is like building a house. You need a strong foundation and of course you need a safe and secure space for the brand and the customers to interact and engage. So I this has been my intent no matter which organization I've worked for in the last 20 years. So Atul, uh, let me get this started because I'm very excited for today's session. Um, what is your current main marketing focus at the moment as a leader? Sure. So Samia, if you look at my marketing currently, I work for Cockroach TV and there are three main things that I'm intending to focus on my marketing. The first is revenue, second is recognition, and third is relationships. And let me unpack that for you a little bit. If you look at revenue, I started my career in sales. So I always believe to be a part of the revenue camp. And hence, I'm currently working very closely with my sales teams to build a healthy opportunity funnel for the year. See, revenue is uh, the heat that keeps the house warm. And that's why all family members, including marketing, sales, ops, HR, should be working towards building that healthy revenue pipeline for the company to sustain and prosper. The second part, which I mentioned was recognition, right? Uh, if you look at getting the word out is something which is very critical for me in the current role, because Cockroach DB might be the best kept secret in the world of databases, right? And I, my intention is that as I try and work towards with my sales and my customers of who we are and what we can do for them, I want to ensure that everybody understands the value that Cockroach DB can bring to their table. And that's the reason why I am focusing on a little bit what I call as bonfire marketing. And what I mean by that is that typically I've seen marketers, especially in B2B, where they do one big event, one big campaign, and then there's a lull for the next three quarters, right? Now, uh, not only have you burnt all your uh, budgets in one big activity, but the recall factor is not there if you end up doing the fire uh, works kind of marketing approach. And that's why I intend to invest and I focus on cam campaigns which are more sustainable and they kind of carry on for a longer duration. Whether it's my social media strategy or my event strategy, that's the underlying factor that I build on. The third but most important is relationships, right? Uh, just to give you some numbers, if you look at the APAC cloud spending market right now, it's forecasted to be roughly 330 billion by 2027 growing at a CAGR of, say, 17%. Now, it's not possible for any one OEM to cover such a huge market. And that's where relationships and partners and strategic alignments with different partners become very, very critical. So at Cockroach DB, we work very closely with all top hyperscalers, but currently our traction with AWS, APAC is huge. So those are the top three uh, focuses of marketing for me, which is revenue, recognition, and relationships. I love how they all start with R and, and that, you know, kind of like summarizes a lot of the important things. Um, and I think since we are in the topic of marketing, how do you personally define success in marketing? Sure. I think, uh, you know, marketing success varies uh, depending on what phase of your career and what company do you normally work for, right? And it kind of changes every one to two years. But if you look at uh, the kind of future of marketing, how I put it, I think majority of the marketers joined the marketing division because they wanted to be something which is away from mathematics and technology. I've heard the answer for multiple times. But guess what? Uh, I ended up being running marketing for a tech company and uh, marketing has shifted away from a madman era to a mathman era, right? Which means, that if you look at marketing, it's all about data, it's all about insights. So I think marketing definition and success is in today's current world is how do you ensure that you can be the tag team partner with sales and ensure you're able to deliver on the uh, assets which the company wants you to be a partner, right? Uh, and specifically on B2B, I think the way B2B marketing has evolved over a period of time uh, what was relevant yesterday is not going to be relevant tomorrow. And that's why 
continuous adaptability and agility is something which is expected from marketing as a division and uh, as a marketing lead you have to have to focus on that bit so i think that is where i see marketing success as as which is ensuring revenue for the company ensuring sales successful and that's how i define it i i really love how the collaboration internally is still very much important as is adapting externally um to a lot of the factors that we're faced with today um now i want to check with you uh, as of course you have a lot of experience in this industry but what is would you say is the biggest challenge uh, marketers face today uh, i think let me just try and uh, give you a perspective right and i'll go back to the earlier bit i was saying if you look at uh, in general marketers and how they started in this world majority of the marketers started coming in this world because they were fancied by the advertising part of it right uh and that is where uh when they joined marketing they had that fancy thing in their eye that it's all going to be a art form but marketing has moved away from that right uh, how i say this is that if you look at, i don't know if you're familiar with the uh, clock model framework by scott galloway but look at the world of marketing as let's say you completing a lap from uh 12 o'clock in a clockwise direction to 12 right so from 12 to 4 the pre purchase marketing thought process is where majority of the effort is put in by marketing right uh, think of uh, marketing and sales as the driver and the navigator uh, you know running a lap of uh, a racing car that is where the marketing is in the driving seat it is the marketing department that ensures and prepares the market for who the organization is what they stand for and how they can try and focus on the right set of customers to try and get business for now uh, please understand that sales always have to navigate in the 12 to 4 format where they clearly call out who are our target market which is the customers are facing issues with but in the 12 to 4 lap it is marketing which is the driving seat if you look at the 4 to 8 on the clock model which is merely sales become the driver and marketing becomes a navigator because if you look at the purchase stage it is sales which is in control and it's only marketing which is playing a supportive role where we help in pipeline acceleration model and ensuring that the customer who's now warmed up is eventually going to move towards the closure part of it right and the last and the most important phase which is post purchase phase between 8 to 12 is where i think both sales and marketing share the space of driving and navigating because i think customer references become a very very critical part in the post purchase mode unless and until a customer speaks well of you in the word of mouth as you know always travels longer than a company talking about themselves so that's how i gain success of marketing or where we going with got it um I think you've provided a really good perspective on how each like department plays a really definite role um whether it be like marketing on the drivers kind of like you know side or sales being the one driving the force um everyone and every particular piece plays a big role in a puzzle um so let's talk about marketing relationships um I guess with sales and um what i specifically wanted to get out of that is um what do you think is the most successful campaign that maybe you know marketing has led or marketing has led in collaboration with sales sure sabina i think sabina uh, if you look at uh, you know the world today uh, everything has evolved right and let me just give you a stat that if you look at the 500 fortune 500 companies from 1955 and the fortune 500 list today only roughly about 49 companies are still on that list which means that 90% of the companies did not survive the test of time right now what i'm going with this is that in today's time staying relevant is very very critical and that is where majority of the marketers actually struggle because unless and until you are relevant to your customer and you're relevant to sales you will see value but if you don't if you're not able to bring in that value addition on the table nobody's going to give you a seat on the table now if you look at success with sales i think there are three things that sales worry about and those three things are commissions commissions and commissions what i mean by that is that if you help sales make money and be successful in their job 
I think they will see value in what marketing is suitable. And then personally, in my uh, journey of 20 years, what I have seen is that if we are able to give back time to our sales team for doing more calls and actually trying to get more business, they value it. If you understand their pain points of what they're feeling on the field and you can help pave that path to their success and help them close deals, they value marketing. And at the end of the day, if you are that partner to sales where they can come to when they get stuck in a deal and you're able to help them nudge forward towards the deal, that's where they value it. So I think in different phases of my career, I have done different things with sales, whether it's big format events, whether it's getting them that interview with an executive who is as if now not closing, whether trying to help them capture newer territory by through telecalling, or whether trying to be, help them do a very one-to-many format, ABM format roundtable, which helps them get the introduction, it's worked well. So very difficult to pinpoint on one tactic. I think tactics are a part of success. It's more about understanding sales better and helping them be successful is where marketing shines. And and you know we're all for the support that each um, area needs to make to be able to fill that gap. Um, and since we're talking about events, I wanted to know specifically like what's the most successful event or engagement piece you've hosted, and uh, what made sure. it successful. Sure, Sabina. So I think um, so you know, typically the tactic of events is something which sales team will always find the most impactful, and the reason for that is that sales always. Uh, prefer and like the interaction not during but after and before the events with the customers and which is something which virtual events will never be able to take i mean look at what happened during covid right everybody had to pivot to virtual events because there was no other option but the moment post covid happened everybody had to bounce back to face to face event that too with vengeance so clearly uh, i think awareness is a good start but action is what is most relevant to sales and that's why events become very critical. Now, what I have personally seen successful with sales in one of the two, three big events I can tell you, which has worked well for us, was my past life. I was working for AWS, where there was a lot of traction that we were already having with the technical audience because AWS was a technical organization and had a strong technology foothold. But we were not able to get enough traction at the executive level. And that is where we started building a property called Executive Leaders, where we started talking about not only what the tech did for the tech teams, but what were the outcomes and the business benefits of that technology. And that is how you differentiate on the thought process of what a tech person gets on a table vis-a-vis what a marketing person gets on a table, right? Of course, at the end of the day, it's the technology that runs the car. But unless and until you're talking about that it's that car that helps you go from point A to point B, it's that car that helps you save time, and it's that car that helps you elevate your status in society, the outcomes and the benefits of what that product and solution does is what marketing gets on the table. And that's exactly what we did with uh, that particular event called Exec Leaders. We were able to tap into top 250 accounts, build a pipeline of about 8 million, and eventually that property became a yearly event to follow through. Well, I'm very happy to hear about how the success of this event was able to propel you to now what you do at uh, Cockroach Labs. Um, and if you could, you know, share a little bit more about like, um, how did you measure now kind of like the events ROI, you know, as a leader, or how did um, that impact um, pipeline or lead generation? Sure. So I think let me now uh, get you the context of how we normally uh, you know, judge success of events in my current organization. So, if you look at uh, Cockroach DB, here we don't have a classical MQL SQL format, right? Um, and that is where typically in B2B everything stand has been MQL SQL. But I think sometimes, and a lot of marketers might not like me when I say this, but it's a lot of vanity metrics when you come to MQL SQL. Because at the end of the day, when let's say you run a campaign and there are a lot of people who have downloaded a uh, you know, a content asset of yours, which marketing will call an MQL, sales don't see value in that, right? Because for them, valuable conversation is when a customer wants to talk to you about something which they already have context for. And Gartner had printed that study for a long time back, which is if you look at the 
journey of a customer before they talk to a sales guy was roughly about 59% about 3 years back now that journey is almost 71% which means the customer has already done their research almost 71% of the journey is already done before they talk to a customer right so i think content strategy is important but we need to get away from the vanity metrics of impressions and mql sql so what we do at cockroach db is something called a factor of number of meetings post and pre event and there's something called era which is engagement rich accounts so the success of marketing is and sales is judged by the amount and the scoring that we are able to put on a customer by how much engagement have we had with that customer and that engagement can be a full 360 degree view of the number of activities they've been a part of events they've taken part of calls we've had with the customer and the likes of those right also when we meet a customer at an event we eventually have an sdr team that follows through and the success of that event and roi is judged by the number of meetings we've had in the next 3 weeks so if we met the customer and customer showed interest we put that at stage 0 if a customer is willing to now have another conversation with a broader team we put that at stage 1 and when a customer commits to a poc we put it at stage 2 that's how we put the roi format and as you can see it's fairly quantifiable you can follow through and then you can look at the data after the end of the year and judge which event which activity actually worked for you and which was pretty much only for awareness creation this brings a, a smile to me because i love how things get like um you know quantifiable and uh, based on the scoring system the stage system it feels like it's very streamlined to understand and even personalize the way that you reach out to these leaders so i i i love how you explained all of that and we are actually down to our couple last questions so i'm very excited for this part as well given that you've been in the industry for a long time already I want to know what career advice would you give to anyone starting in the marketing industry? Sure, Bea. Thank you. Uh, I think, Sabina, the uh, people who would want to join marketing field now uh, in the 2024 plus world, I would say that don't join marketing industry just because you feel you're a creative person, right? Don't get fancied by the world of advertising, which is usually every MBA student's first view of marketing. right uh because as i mentioned earlier the industry has moved on long from there uh but join the field of marketing because you see value of what marketing brings to the table right uh personally if i had to tell you i would say that you know as cmos you need to understand that you need to go beyond the gamut of marketing to maintain and sustain the field of marketing till the time we try and work in a periphery of saying you know i am the brand custodian and that's what i do i don't think the longevity of this function is going to be within the paradigm of brand unless and until you are able to break that barrier and move towards revenue you break that carry barrier and you try and get towards what you do for the customer think backwards from the customer needs and help that conversation put on the table is where the field of marketing will be so anybody who is joining marketing now should focus on how can they be the representative of their possible customer internally on the organization that is what a marketing is supposed to be and not just a creative person of course it will always have a bit of art to it uh, but that's not just what marketing defines so it has much more than just a creative side of it yeah there there's a lot to explore with the marketing role today especially that it has evolved um you know using data using numbers using um analytics of like how people respond and um what do you believe would be the biggest opportunity that marketing leaders today um might not have um uh, might not have been able to see in the past sure so i think uh, so when i look at now uh, and i can talk more about b2b because that's what uh, i have survived and thrived in my professional life i think in today's time uh, my concern is that majority of the brands are sinking in the sea of sameness right uh, everybody wants to look different but they end up looking the same and if you look at the social media uh, majority of the brands are actually wing on themselves what i mean by that is that they just talk about we can do this we are better than that we do this and we are uh, you know uh, better than all my competitor that thought process is something which needs to really involve 
right? Uh, I think in future you would be forced to differentiate or you will die. And that's one thing which marketers definitely need to work towards. Second, I think as the marketing department and as a marketer, you need to be either entertaining the customer, edu educating the customer, encouraging the customer, or empowering your customer, right? If you're not doing either one of those or more of those, then clearly marketing is not pulling their weight. And that is where I see opportunity that we need to start thinking at the marketing function more holistically than just about one or the other, right? And in the end, the third thing I will say is that marketing is all about persuasion, right? You cannot persuade somebody unless and until you know them. And that's why I would suggest that the marketing department and marketers should invest time, effort, and budget to understand the customer a bit more, right? Uh, it's like uh, you need to date your customer before you propose marriage. If you don't invest enough time in that, clearly asking the question too soon will ensure that you're not able to get the desired result you're looking at no matter how good your intentions are intentions don't get you business hard work does efforts does and that's where the opportunity of marketing lies beautiful get to know your customer before proposing to them i love that uh last question for you atul how would you describe the role of a marketing leader in one word and why Sure, so been a great question, right? Um, I think, Sabina, uh, if you had to suggest and describe the role of a CMO uh, in one word, I would say a collaborator. I think it is the marketing department and the marketing leader who's able to actually cross-functionally talk to anybody and everybody and have a point of view. I think it is the, the CMO who's able to understand the value proposition from a customer perspective and yeah, I don't know how many CMOs or marketing team leaders actually talk to customers, but I have seen personally that when a conversation which I have with a customer is a very different conversation that a sales leader has with the customer, right? I think there are things which a marketer can get away by asking a customer which a salesperson will never be. So I think uh, as a collaborator, you're able to be that bridge which kind of uh, fills the gap between between sales and the customer. Also, between sales and other departments, I think that perspective is lost sometimes because a lot of the departments within the organizations are far from sales. And that's why it's important that marketers help that internal gap also of trying to help the organizations understand how can sales be supported better, right? It's like how your mother runs the house and doesn't get enough credit for. That's exactly what marketing department does. Uh, so the potential is that if this department runs well and has uh, the motherly instincts of ensuring that you nurture the customer, you support your sales, you're able to check the departments who are not doing the right things but still try and pull them up in the right direction, the whole engine works seamlessly. And that is the power of a CMO or a marketing department. Thank you for watching CMO Chats with the Autorist Club. Cast this episode on YouTube and Spotify.